Here's the last part of our review for the uh, stoichiometry. And this one's very, well actually it's the same experiment you guys did in the lab, but we're gonna go through it, through this. And you'll have something very similar to this on the uh, assessment. It says a student placed a piece of nickel and silver nitrate solution. Silver metal precipitated and aqueous nickel to nitrate was produced. The student collected the following data. The mass of the beaker, mass of beaker with silver, mass of nickel before, mass of nickel after. Well, let's do this right away and then I'll switch to a bigger piece of paper and we can uh, do the problem. We're going to need, definitely we're going to need the mass of silver. So the mass of silver is going to be the mass of silver and the beaker, 103.13, minus just the beaker. So we can go ahead and do that, 103.13. 0.13 minus 102.05, and that's 1.08 grams, and that's silver. And let's might as well do the nickel while we're here. So the mass of nickel before was 5.00, and after. 4.69 so we'll take the difference to see how much was actually used 5.00 minus 4.69 4.69 equals 0 0.31 0 0.31 grams of nickel were used <laughs> all right from there let's go ahead and we can do we can do the problem let me get off piece of paper out here and let's just write up on the top up here what we had from the previous one. We had 1.08 grams of silver and 0 0.31 grams of nickel. Alright, first thing we need to do as usual is go ahead and write a balanced equation. So we had nickel reacting with silver nitrate, AgNO3, and it gave us silver, Ag, plus nickel nitrate. So we have that. Now we need to balance for charges. Well, we know free elements are zero, so that takes care of those. Silver is one, nitrate is a minus one, so we're, we're pretty good there. And it says in the problem, it says nickel two, and we know nitrate is a minus, so we do the crossing. So it's Ni, NO3 in parentheses, two. Okay, so we balance it for charges. Now we need to go back and balance for uh, coefficients. Well, you can pretty easily see two nitrate. We've only got one here, so we need a two there, two silver, two silver, one nickel, one nickel. Looks like pretty good. And I'll rewrite this to make it a little cleaner. Plus two Ag NO3 and silver plus nickel nitrate NO3 two. Well, at this point, we uh, can go right through the problems here. And A, it says write a balanced equation for the reaction, all right, which we did. And it says from the mass of nickel reacted, determine the theoretical yield of silver. All right, they're talking, always talk about theoretical yields, they're talking about the grams. So, we need to determine a theoretical yield, so we don't know what this is. We do have the actual. So this is the actual. And we know how much nickel reacted. Well, so it's a very straightforward stoichiometry problem at this point. We need to change nickel to moles. So 0 0.31 grams of nickel all over one. 
times one mole of nickel is 58.7 grams or 58.7 grams of nickel and that equals, I'm just going to bring it down here it equals a pretty small number you get right down to it 0 0.00528 grams or excuse me this should be moles moles of nickel and again it looks like we're using three significant figures up there so I guess we'll stick with three <laughs> I should probably put another zero on the one, but I didn't. All right, so this is nickel. And the nice thing for our molar ratio, our coefficient of nickel is one, and this, this is going to be the actual value because the, the ratio is already at a one. So we're pretty good to go there. So now we can go ahead and do our BCA table. Or change after. So our nickel is going to be 0 0.00528. Our silver is going to be two times that amount because there's just what one is. So then two times one or two times this is actually 0 0.0106. We don't know what these are. So our change we are going to lose, <coughs> excuse me, 0 0.00528. And we know that's going to be 0. This, we really don't care about this. We don't care about silver nitrate. You can definitely see that it is going to be more than this. So this is definitely going to be an excess. So we're just going to put this in as excess because we would actually it doesn't really tell us what we're just a solution so that's going to be an excess there so we're not really too worried about that <laughs> actually we would end up using 0 0.0106 but I should have probably just said this was excess here and it's going to be an excess so or it's really not entering into the problem at all. All right, so for the silver, we're going to end up, if we look at our balanced equation, oh, I've got to put my two right there. <laughs> Go back to our balanced equation, we have two silver. So that's going to be 0 0.0106. It's going to leave us with 0 0.0106. Nickel again doesn't enter into it, but it's got a coefficient of one, so it would be 0 0.00528 or 0 0.00528. But this is really what we're worried about. We're worried about silver. All right, so we got the moles of silver. So this is actually going to be our theoretical amount because this is what it should end up being. So we can take this value and we can convert it to grams. So 0 0.0106 moles of silver divided by one times one mole of silver is actually 107.9 grams of silver. So this is going to equal approximately 1.14 grams of silver. So this is our theoretical. Here is our actual. In all honesty, the actual should always be less than the theoretical. If you came out with this a bigger number than the theoretical, you probably did something wrong. But we want percent yield. And that's pretty pretty easy to find. Take our actual 1.08 divided by theoretical 1.14 
times 100, and that comes out to about, yeah, that goes 94.7% or so. So there's our percent yield. This is the, the problem you guys did with the silver nitrate. Uh, actually, I think we used copper. We didn't use uh, nickel. Same procedure, though. So that wraps up the review. I'll get these posted onto Google Classroom.